customer. Welcome back to the server-side rendering with the, with the, with the JavaScript. Hey everyone, welcome back to the... Hey everyone, welcome back to the server-side rendering with JavaScript framework series. In this video, we're going to profile a non-server-side rendered React app and then go and compare that to a React app that is server-side rendered. We're going to use the Chrome Dev Tools to get a good look at what's going on. And then we're going to simulate a real world test using web page test. So let's dive right down into the laptop. To the left here, I have my non server side rendered app. And to the right, I have my server side rendered version. So let's start by profiling the non server side render. If I view page source, you can see it's just this boilerplate HTML. So I'm going to inspect the non-server side rendered and go to the network tab. I'm going to ensure that the cache is disabled while the dev tools is open. And then I'm going to go to the throttling and I'm going to choose good 2G, which will have us incur 150 milliseconds of latency per round trip. So now I'm going to go into performance and run a profile. So we have right here our timeline. We can see that the HTML downloaded in 185 milliseconds, the CSS in 174. And right here, we don't have any meaningful HTML, so it's just a blue background. So we have to wait for the JavaScript to download, which took about a second. And then after the JavaScript downloaded, parsed, and executed, we then had to make an API call. So we still didn't have the render ready. So that was 255 more milliseconds to get the JSON data. And once that's done, we can then render our page. So now let's profile the server-side rendered app. So inspect, network, and select good 2G. Go to performance and run the profile. Now that it's done, we can see that it took about 221 milliseconds for the HTML to download, and then 167 milliseconds for the CSS. And then about 500 milliseconds, we had meaningful HTML to render for the user. Because remember, all the browser needs to render the page is HTML and CSS. So you can see that our JavaScript is actually still downloading in the background. And so that took just a little under a second. And then once that's done, you can see that our app still went out and made a network request for the fax, even though it was server-side rendered. And I'll actually show you how to fix this in the next video when we switch to Preact. But you can see that it still didn't do another render. So our app was about interactive at about 1,500 milliseconds. So to see this work, though, in real life, let's go out and run web page test. So in web page test, I want to select a mobile device on a throttled network. So I'm going to use my non-server side rendered app first, select a Moto G Gen 4, make sure it's on Chrome. I will then use the mobile 3G slow, which is 200 milliseconds of round trip latency. And then I will start the test. And while that's running, I'm going to do the same thing, but for the server side rendered app. So now that the non-server side rendered profile is finished, we can see that the load time was about 1.7 seconds. At the first byte came in at about a second, and we rendered shortly after. But the time to interactive over here was about 2.9 seconds. So even though the load time was 1.7, 1.8 seconds, we weren't interactive until 2.9 seconds. So the app wasn't usable until almost three seconds. And if we go and look at all the runs down below, you can see that the first view was 1.7, and then the other second one was 1.7, and they're all about the same. So I'm gonna go back up to the first run and click on the film strip view. And I wanna make sure that I'm at the 0.1 second view. So I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning, and I'm going to profile what happens as we scroll through the page load. And you can see, actually, that this red bar matches to where we are in the film strip. So we're going to first start out by requesting and downloading the document. And that happens in about 926 milliseconds. 
And then we're going to request the CSS, which took about 210 milliseconds. So at 1.2 seconds, we were ready to render that blue background. But we don't have any meaningful HTML, so we have to download the JavaScript and execute that to make our API call. So the JavaScript took about 642 milliseconds to download and execute. And then it took about one second for the facts.json to load until we can finally render our page at 2.9 seconds. So now we can see why that the main page showed that our app wasn't interactive until 2.9 seconds. It's because we had to execute the JavaScript, make the request, and then finally our app was ready for use. So now let's compare this to the server-side rendered version. We can see the load times were very similar, 1.6, 1.7, and 1.5. And the, the median load time was 1.6 seconds. The first byte came at 0.7. We rendered at about a second. But we can see that the interactive was at 1.6 seconds, so really quick to the load time. So we can actually go into the film strip view and make sure we're at 0.1 seconds, and we'll start from the beginning again. So it took about 716 milliseconds to download and parse the HTML, and then 212 milliseconds for the CSS, and then 643 for the JavaScript. So we could actually render, though, at 1.1 seconds because we had all of our HTML and CSS. Now, the time to interactive wasn't until 1.6. So that's about a half a second the user was not able to interact with the app. And we can't actually see that here in the timeline because it cuts it off at the first render. And one thing you also want to notice here is down at the bottom of the request, the fifth request is still the facts.json. We are still making this request even though we've server-side rendered the app, which will push out our time to interactive. So with the non-server-side rendered app, our time to interactive was almost three seconds. But when we server-side rendered, we chopped that all the way down to 1.6 seconds. So if we go back to the Chrome DevTools, you can see that at about 1.5 seconds is where we make that HTTP request for the JSON. And then it finishes at about 177 milliseconds later. So this is time that we could actually be interactive. So as you can see, server-side rendering your React app drastically cuts down on when your website is first rendered and when it becomes interactive. And also, if we could have avoided that extra network request, we could have been interactive even faster. So in the next video, we're actually going to switch from React to Preact. And Preact is this super light React alternative. So it has the same API surface level as React, but it's much, much lighter, coming in at around 3 kilobytes. So in that video, we're going to switch on over to Preact, and then we'll also avoid that network request. So that's all for today. If you like that video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all the videos in this series. So that's all. I will see you all in the next video. Please, David, just do this. And please, you, stop wrestling. <laughs> You're like enrolling and they're like, boom. <laughs>